Hi, I'm Jörg. Welcome to part one of this two-part series about stepper motors and servo motors for the DIY project. If you browse the forums, you will find the same question asked over and over. What is a better motor, stepper or servo motor? And I will not be able to tell you in this video today. However, I like to give you a couple of pointers for your project. One or the other might be better, but if we think about CNC machinery and you look at any high-end machines like a Haas made in the US or uh, an Okuma or a Mazak, then you will find usually servo motors and there is a reason for that. And often those are Fanuc motors or you find a Siemens drive system in there and those are high-end components. Now for the DIY there are a little bit out of our price range. At least they're out of my price range for sure. So here I have several motors laid out for you. These two are stepper motors, these three are servo motors. They're all the same size. They are called NEMA 23. NEMA 23 means that the faceplate and the faceplate dimensions are the same. They fall into that particular standard. However, what I found is that the shaft is not always the same. This shaft dimension here is eight. This shaft dimension is six millimeters. So if you retrofit your machine, you might want to watch out that the shaft possibly is not the same dimension even so it's, they're both NEMA 23 motors. Well, since we talk about the shaft here for a moment, um, I have two shaft couplers right here. This is a slit coupler. So it's a slit shaft coupler. And I have used them in the past. They are great if you like have a lot of offset to deal with, but they fatigue and break. That's not a good thing. This is called an elastomeric jaw coupling. And those are much better. You can get them in different dimensions for different shafts. Uh, I can recommend this one. So let's go to the two stepper motors that I have here. The first thing when you take a stepper in your hand is that you want to turn the shaft and you can't. And the reason for that is that the hybrid stepper motor, this is what this is, it's a hybrid stepper motor, has a permanent magnetic rotor inside. So that permanent magnet is attracted to the outside iron and therefore you cannot turn this. And that is one of the major advantages. So the torque that the motor develops while there is no power to it, it's called the detent torque. And servo motors, hybrid, excuse me, hybrid stepper motors all have that phenomenon that you have a holding power, the detent torque on the shaft when there's no power. All right. This here is a servo and we can just simply spin this. And that is one of possibly the drawbacks if you are building a CNC machine, because if you have a Z axis, that Z axis might drop down on its own weight because there is no braking force when there is no power. Like I said, this has three Newton meters. So the three Newton meters is the holding torque of this motor that would be rated when the motor has power on it. So the holding torque is three Newton meters. Well, that's great. But in our project, we want to move an axis and a mass with a certain inertia from A to B. And that is now where a drawback of the stepper motor comes in. So the holding torque, it's a great advantage. But that torque actually falling off rapidly with higher RPMs is one of the major drawbacks of a stepper motor. So the values here is that you have half the torque left at about 500 RPMs. You only have 10% of the torque left at about 1,500 RPMs. So here we see that the stepper motor has a drastic drawback when it comes to the useful range of its RPM. It just doesn't develop any torque anymore at high RPMs. So here now a quick calculation of how many RPMs do I really need to drive my axis? 
if I only have half of the torque left at 500 RPMs with the step-up motor, then how many RPMs do I really need? Well, let's say we have a CNC router and I want to make a fast cut through wood. I would say we need 2000 millimeters per minute. So 2000 millimeter per minute need to be achieved with a ball screw that has a pitch of, let's say 20 millimeters. That is relatively common. So 20 millimeters, 2000 divided by 20 will give me the revolution per minute. And that would be 100. So to go 2000 millimeters per minute, we see that we need 100 RPMs on the motor. That is a good application for this. Well, if we have a large machine and we are at the end of the machine bed, and now we want to come back to the zero position, we need a fast move, a G zero command to come back to its home position. And that is now where the drawback is because that fast movement will be limited by the higher RPM the motor can do with a low torque. And that is the major drawback of it. And that is where the servo motor will shine. Okay, so why are they called hybrid stepper motors? Well, it's a hybrid because it's a hybrid out of two designs that we, we know of. And one is the permanent magnetic stepper. Well, I said it's a permanent magnetic rotor. And then we also have the variable reluctance stepper motor. And the variable reluctance stepper motor can make more steps because of the design of its rotor. Well, if you melt both of them together, you get the hybrid stepper that still has the holding torque or the detent torque. And yet it has a very low step angle. So the step angle of this motor right here is 1.8 degrees. So you want a hybrid stepper because of the low step angle. 360 divided by 1.8 native resolution here is 200 steps going once around. So for the stepper motor, you need a driver or an amplifier. That is what this is. And if you get an amplifier, make sure that you buy a digital amplifier because it has less noise and also, so less noise means less vibration on the motor shaft and it also can develop more torque. So here we have an open loop and a closed loop stepper motor. So this is my mock-up of a closed loop. I don't really have one. The open loop has one wire, one set of wire that goes to the amplifier and there is no return wire or there is no loop wire that closes that loop. So we have an open loop. Basically, we give it a command and the motor then moves to that command. Make 200 steps and it makes 200 steps. That is what we have to believe. We don't know if it really made 200 steps. If I say go one revolution forward and if I over torque that motor, there's a chance that this motor can lose steps. And that is one of the drawbacks of an open loop system. You just have no feedback if it really made ever to that position or not. Now, does this make this motor more inaccurate? No. The only thing is that if it gets over torqued, we really don't know if it ever made its position or not. But if you use it in its design limits, it can be a very accurate uh, solution for you. So here I have a representation of a closed loop stepper motor. The difference is that we have a gizmo on the back and that is called a resolver or an encoder. Now the encoder is coupled to the rotor and it is usually a plate, a glass plate that has etched increments on there and it can count how many steps the motor really made and therefore it will detect if there are any step losses and it can alarm the machine of a step loss or it can prevent the step loss in the first place by still trying to get to that position that we just didn't reach. So let's talk about the pricing of these for a moment and I just looked up a generic stepper motor, 425 ounce inches like this one right here. And it was around $40 for a single one. In a pack, I think you can beat that price. And the driver itself, it's a digital driver, was 25 bucks. So let's, around, let's say around $70, you can get into a single motor with that 
amount of torque. Now for the closed loop that's a little different. We see for the drive system here roughly 90 to 150 dollar. So 75 to 90 or 75 to 150. Um, it's a bit more expensive but the closed loop is wor worth having in my opinion. And also there's one other advantage of these systems and that is they work right out of the box. So a stepper motor you grab it and you're ready to go. There's a little bit tuning that you need to do as far as the maximum acceleration and the maximum speed but that is for every motor and after that you're done. So they work right out of the box. So here are three servo motors that I've laid out for you. These are all NEMA 23 180 watts. These are made by JMC and this one here is made by Stepper Online. And like we discussed with the Stepper motor that we have a detent torque when there's no power. The servo motor doesn't have that. So we can just free spin this shaft and the drawback is that if you have an access on your machine that needs to be stopped when there's no power, well this motor can't do that. And to overcome that most of the servo motors that you buy can be added or can be had or ordered with an additional brake. So here's an additional 24 volt input. In the moment the motor receives 24 volt the brake releases and you can turn the shaft. 24 volt falls off because of an alarm or because there's no power. It grabs the shaft and now your axis is secured in place. So the problem can be overcome. Now this solution integrated in the motor was about $100 more uh, shipped to my door. So this one cost me $190 and the stepper online on sale was only $100. Remember this one was about with the encoder or with the amplifier together 70 and these were about 90 to 150 as a closed loop system. Okay so the advantage here is that we have a much quieter running system and not only by noise but also by noise on the shaft. If it's correctly tuned you have a very smooth running system. And the torque curve in the stepper we said it falls off. Now in the servo motor it is much more flat. So that means that at a higher RPM we still have a good amount of torque available. And I mentioned in the first section of the video that we have the drawback of the stepper motor that we cannot move from A to B with a G0 fast. Now this motor can do that. It can run up to 5000 RPM with a relatively high torque. So therefore we can make those quick movements in between the cuts or in between the machine is in, machine is in service. Now that is very nice. The peak torque allowance for different manufacturers is different. So we can see sometimes we can get for a couple of seconds three to five times the amount of current or three to five times the amount of torque out of a motor like this. Of course that generates heat so we have to see in the design of the machine that that is something that we stay under in most cases. But if we have to accelerate a heavy gantry and stop it well then we can take care or can utilize that peak torque that the software and the manufacturer gives us. That's one of the major advantages of a servo motor. The encoder in the back is usually a higher quality it has uh, finer resolution often and also with that finer resolution we don't lose torque. So the micro stepping in a stepper motor uh, reduces the torque amount and it does not reduce the torque amount in a servo motor. Now one of the major drawbacks of the servo motor is that you cannot take it, mount it on the axis and let it run. It just doesn't work. So the PID loop here needs to be tuned and we need for that an USB to R232 wire and there is a gizmo in here actually a chip. So in it, these are not expensive they are five dollars roughly 
then you need to make a pigtail from the RS-232 to the communication port. No rocket science here, three wires, TX, RX and ground. So once you have done all that and hooked up to the software that you can download directly from the web page, you will need to tune this. And that is where most people have problems that have never done this before. Now, I think you could struggle through that, but just let me tell you that I've tuned several of these JMC motors and I can have one in the same axis giving one in the same resistance, but the tuning parameters from motor to motor will be different. So you cannot just call your buddy and say, hey, can you give me your tuning parameters and I'm going to apply them to my motor. Most likely that will not work. So that is the major drawback. So unless you're a controls engineer, you can do it like this. But if you have never done it before, it's a major obstacle to overcome with the servo motor system. Now, this said, there are so-called auto-tune functions in these and they get better and better. And yes, I always run the auto-tune first to get a base set of parameters. But for a CNC machine, we have something that's called a following or tracking error. And you want to get that error as small as possible. And the, usually the auto-tune does not get me to an acceptable error. Okay, I think that wraps this up.